Okay, chapter six now, additional issues regarding cost, volume, profit. <clears throat> the key objectives here is to, again, understand and describe the essential features of the cost, volume, profit, this time income statement. Apply the basic cost, volume, profit concepts. Explain uh, sales mix and its effect on break-even. And number five, we're going to skip four, understand how operating leverage affects profitability. Okay, let... Cost, volume, profit review. The study of the CVP is a study of how uh, costs change and the effects of those costs changes because of volume and the resulting effect on company profit. Okay, the whole thing on profit. It's important when we're setting our plans for profit uh, in the future. And we determine, it helps us determine sales mix and the capacity and setting selling price. Basic concept, uh, management often wants information reported in a special format income statement. This is called a CVP format and it's only used internally. What we do is we take the actual income statement which has revenue minus all expenses. But we classify the expenses, and we call them costs now, as either fixed or variable. And then we report it in a contribution margin format. For example, instead of having sales less all costs give us net income of 120,000, we say, okay, sales, and we subtract from sales just the variable costs first, which gives us a contribution margin. Now this is new, remember we talked about that. And then from the contribution margin, we subtract the fixed cost and what's left then is our profit. So we can express the cost volume income statement in total because we sold 1,600 camcorders. On a unit basis, each camcorder is 500. The variable cost for each camcorder is 300. So the contribution margin per unit is 200. The total contribution margin is 1,600 camcorders times 200, which equals 320,000. So here we have it again. This is a CVP income statement. Now we're not changing the income statement. This is exactly what the income statement was. It had sales of 800,000 and it had total expenses of 680,000 and had net income of 120. All we do is reformat it. We look at all the expenses and we say, okay, we're gonna put together the variable and the fix, separate, we're gonna segregate them. So now we have sales minus the variable gives me my contribution margin, minus the fix gives me my profit. And we just reorganized our income statement. All right, now let's do some exercises. Blue Diamond Inc. sold 20,000 units and recorded sales of 80,000. 800,000 for the first quarter of 2012. Making the sales, the company incurred the following costs. So we have the cost, cost of goods sold, so much variable. On 20,000 units, the total variable is 250. Uh, selling expenses, 100,000, so obviously $5 each, administration expenses that. The fixed part of cost of goods sold, selling and admin are here. Now you're asked to prepare an income statement. You see, with the data like this, until you put it into a CVP format, then you don't see the contribution margin, and then you can't use all of that to predict. So easily then we start off with sales, 20,000 units, the variable costs, 432. That's the cost of goods sold, selling, administration, total variable. Contribution margin then, 800,000 sales minus the variable cost gives me a contribution margin. Now that's not profit. That contributes first of all to fixed cost, and the fixed costs then are 208,000. So once the 368,000 contributes to the, two th to the fixed costs and covers the fixed costs of 208, what you're gonna have then is a profit of 160,000. And so that's how you reformat that statement. Now you can compute the contribution margin per unit. You know that you had 20,000 units, so the selling price was $40 per union. You know the variable cost and your contribution margin was 368 on 20,000 units, so therefore you know it's $18.40 per unit. And here you have the fixed costs, 
So by dividing the fixed cost by the contribution margin per unit, I can figure my break even. Now, the other thing is I can also express this as a ratio. Sales is always 100%. And I take contribution margin as a percentage of sales. So 3, 368 divided by 800,000 times 100% gives me 46%. Or on a unit basis, remember my selling price was 40. So contribution margin, 1840 divided by my selling price gives me 46%. Now when I use the contribution margin ratio, my break even is in dollars. For example here. We have a total contribution margin of 320, company's contribution margin per unit is 200, contribution margin can be expressed as a ratio, and in this case it is 40%. So if I want my break even in units, I divide my fixed costs by the contribution margin per unit, which is 200,000 divided by 20 gives me my break even in units. Now if I want my break even in sales dollars, I use the same, same fixed cost, but I use the ratio up here, 40%. I divide through by the percentage, and then that would give me, um, oops, that would give me the break even in dollars. Okay. Now, as we took the other night, not only do I have break even, I could figure out target net income by simply adding the net income to my fixed costs. So again, if I want the number of units to get that target net income, I use the contribution margin per unit, and I get my answer in units. If I want uh, my answer in sales dollars, I add the target net income to the fixed cost, divide by the contribution margin ratio, and I have my required total sales needed to give me the target net income of 250. So that's how we use it in that case. Now, as also talked about in the last chapter, the margin of safety, that tells us how far sales can drop from where they are now to the point, break-even point, because below the break-even point, I start to incur a loss. Now, this can be expressed in dollars, which we're going to do, or as a ratio. Well, we're going to do it in dollars. Assume Vargo sales are 800000 the actual expected sales is that the break even in sales is 500, therefore, the margin of safety is 300,000. Now, if you want it as ratio, you take that as a percentage, but we rarely use the margin of safety ratio. We basically look at the actual dollars. Okay. But the real benefit of cost, value, and profit is the, uh, we can analyze the effect of changes on our profit. For example, we have the situation, unit selling price 500, variable cost 300, therefore contribution margin is two. Fixed cost is 200,000, break even in sales is 1,000 units. That's our situation now. Let's assume now a competitor is offering a 10% discount on a selling price of its camcorders. Management has to decide whether they want to offer a similar discount. Well, what effect would that have? Well, if I have a 10% discount on selling price, then my selling price goes down uh, from 500 to 450. And my contribution or my variable cost will still remain the same. So now my contribution margin, instead of being 200, will be 150. Therefore, my break even in the sales, instead of 1,000, I need to sell 333 more units just because I have a 10% discount in selling price. Another situation, management invests in a new robotic equipment that will lower the amount of direct labor required to make the camcorders. Estimates are that the total fixed cost will go up by 30% and that the variable cost per unit will decrease by 30%. So what effect will this have on the new equipment would have on the sales volume? Well, you see my fixed cost uh, has gone up by 30%, so now it's 260. My uh, variable cost has also gone up, so therefore, uh, no, I'm sorry, my variable cost has gone down, decreased by 30,000. Therefore, my break, my contribution margin now is uh, not 300, uh, it would be 390. 
and the break even in sales then is down 897,000. Instead of being 100,000 or 1,000 the way it is now, my break even in sales would go down if, and therefore my profit would go up if I put in this new cam or recorder. Another one. Vargo's principal supplier raw materials has just announced a price increase. The higher cost is expected to increase variable cost by $25. So the variable cost goes up. Management decides to hold the line on selling price, so selling price stays at $500. Uh, it plans a cost-cutting program that will save $17,500 fixed costs. We are currently realizing monthly net income of $80,000 on sales of $1,400 camcorder. What increase in units sold will be needed to maintain the same level of net income? Well, the variable cost of the unit will increase. It'll go from 300 to 325. The fixed costs are reduced. You go from 200 down to 182.5. The contribution of margin, selling price remain the same, 500, but the variable cost increased, so my contribution margin went down. Now, my fixed costs are now 182.5. My target net income was uh, 80,000, so I add the target net income to the fixed cost. I take the new contribution margin, and my sales now 1,500. So if I sell that many units under this new situation, I will maintain uh, my profit margin of, or my profit of 80,000. Now we introduce sales mix. We've been talking so far with break even and all of that as if the company has only one product to sell. But many product, many companies have many different products. But they know what the sales mix are. For every one of these, they sell three of that and so on. So what we do is we take that mix, which is the relative percentage, which is there. If a company's unit sales are 80% printers and 20% computers, then its sales mix is 80-20, or 4 to 1, if you will. Sales mix is important because different products offered all have different contribution margins. For example, now we're going to go through an example, but what we're going to do is weight um, the sales mix with the contribution margin for each product and come up with what's called a weighted average unit contribution. An example is best. Vargo sells not only camcorders, but television sets. Vargo sells his two products the following amount. 1,500 camcorders, 500 television sets. Therefore, the sales mix can be expressed as 75% camcorders, 25% televisions. So now, the camcorder has a selling price of 500, contribution margin of 200. The TV has a contribution margin of 500. You see, we have a contribution margin of 200 for camcorders, and we sell 75% of them. And we have 500 for TV, and we sell 25% of them. The fixed costs remain the same. Fixed costs are shared by both of these products. So, what we develop then is the weighted average contribution margin. We take the unit contribution margin for camcorder. We multiply that by the sales mix, 75%. We add then the unit contribution margin for televisions times the sales mix percentage for televisions. And we come up with a new one, a weighted average contribution margin. That is the contribution margin for both products that are weighted by uh, the contribution margin and the sales mix for each of the two products. Now, we have fixed cost is common to both. So what we do then is we use the weighted average unit contribution margin, 200, and we come up with break even as being 1,000 units. Now, these are 1,000 combined. Some of these are camcorders, some of these are TV. Then we re recalculate it back. If we sell a thousand units and the sales mix is 75% camcorder, then 750 would be camcorders to break even and 250 would be televisions. So there you have, of the unit sales of a thousand units to break even, 750 camcorders, 250 uh, televisions. That's how we use the weighted average contribution margin. 
Now, another concept, and that is cost structure as related to what we call operating leverage. The cost structure is the proportion of fixed costs and variable costs, as I discussed in class the other day. A company consciously decides how much they want of their expenses to be variable and how much fixed to, to a certain degree. But this percentage between fixed and variable has a significant effect on profitability. And that's why companies pay a lot of attention to cost structure. This is operating leverage. Now in your managerial finance course, uh, you may have financial leverage, which is debt and equity. But here we're talking operating leverage. And an example, Vargo and one of its competitors, New Wave Company, both make camcorders. Vargo uses a traditional labor-intensive manufacturing process. So look at Vargo. Its variable costs are 480 and its fixed costs are 200. New Wave, on the other hand, has a completely automated system. So look at its variable costs are much lower. It's 160 as opposed to 400. But its fixed costs are a lot higher. The factory employees involved only in setting up and adjusting. So here we have the income statement of both companies. They both have the same sales, they both have the same net income, but they have a different cost structure. High variable costs, low fixed, Argo. Over here, low variable cost, high fixed. So now, operating leverage is the extent that net income will increase with the change in sales or decline. Higher fixed costs, relative to variable costs causes a company to have a higher operating leverage. When sales revenues are increasing, a company with a higher operating leverage will have more profits. Well, the profits will increase more rapidly, but also the same on the downside. When they are declining, if you have high leverage, you're going, you can go broke even quicker. So this is riskier. So we look at what's called the degree of operating leverage. We take Vargo. Now the degree of operating leverage is simply a measure of the company's volatility in terms of earnings. What we do is we take the contribution margin as a percentage of net income. Now they both have the same net income, but Vargo has a lower contribution margin because it has high variable costs. And it has a degree of operating leverage of 2.67. New Wave, has a higher contribution margin because it has lower uh, variable costs. Same net income, a percentage is 5.33. That means that every 1% increase in sales, the net income will increase 2.67% for Vargo. But 1% increase in sales, the profit or net income for New Wave will increase 5.33 almost twice. New Wave's earnings will go up or down by about two times that of uh, Vargo with an equal increase. Another way to look at it is this. If I have a 10% increase in sales revenue, because I have a degree of operating leverage of 2.67, I will have a 26.7% increase in net income. 10% increase in sales, 26.7 percentage increase in net income. This would go up by 26.7% if I was Vargo. If on the other hand, I have New Wave and I have this cost structure and I have a 10% increase in sales, then my net income will go up 53%, 53. This will go from 120 to about 180. 53, or more than 180, 53%. This means they have a much higher degree of operating leverage. If sales go down by 10%, this net income will go down by 53%. It will be cut in half, 60,000. That's what the degree of operating leverage means. Thank you. Shift F10.